Okay, so this is going to be my first tutorial. It's for the effect in my heat vision video uh, where I do this effect. I'll show you right now. So, as you can see, I put a hole in this big rock. I'm just going to call this hole in the wall because that's probably, I mean, who's going to search for hole in the rock? I don't know. Um, so, let's just do it. You want to have your footage? <clears throat> just get a random selection. It doesn't really matter which bit I took. Like, that'll be enough. Right. So, I'll drag that into a new comp. drag that into a new comp. Let's get rid of this one. So the first thing you want to do is you're going to want to track the camera. If you've got CS6 you'll be able to just use uh, After Effects or CS6 and above. So you want to go track camera. Detailed analysis. You can hide the warning banner if you want. It doesn't really matter because we're not going to be doing anything yet. Uh, well, we could, yeah, I'll speed up the process. Um, variable zoom, uh, and that's fine, that's fine like that. Okay, I'm actually going to add that off for a little bit. Um, and then you want to just do layer, new solid. Doesn't matter what color it is, really. I'll just do white. <coughs> Whole shape. So then you just take this, and honestly, you can just do any sort of random hole shape. The only problem with this method is that it's gonna be the same shape all the way down. Um, you could do this for something like, say, you wanted to do like a cartoon style. Someone just ran through the wall, something like that. Um, so you could just cut out the shape of a person and then stick it there. So you want to you want to make the uh, the mask subtract. So you've got a hole in the middle instead of a shape. Just center the shape a little bit there. There we go. That's a lot better. Um, that's a really rubbish shape. Um, I just did it really quick. But <clears throat> who cares right now? Just turn that one off again. And new solid. Call that element. Okay, so you just want to get element 3D onto the solid. I'm going to put this onto preview and then you want to go to custom layers, custom tasks, uh, text, and masks, and go whole shape. Scene setup. Just click extrude, and that's not worked. Let me see. Okay, let's get rid of that. Go back here. Turn back on the whole shape. Have a look. Maybe just pre-compose that. Yeah. Pre-compose that. We'll move all our attributes. No reason to open a new comp. So now we've got this and do layer. Auto trace. Luminance. So now that should do it a lot better. <laughs> we turn that off again. And then do yep, that's right. Set up. And if we click extrude now, there we go. So now I've got this really cartoony looking shape. And obviously, the rock or wall, if the wall is that thin, then you keep it that thin. Uh, if you want to have it so it's quite a thick wall or whatever you're putting the hole in. You, uh, you just want to extrude back. I did. I, I think I did like 15. So that's 15. Basically, the higher the number, the thicker it's going to be. You really want it to be quite long, so that you get. 
until you get this really nice parallax like that when you when when you turn and when when you're gonna go past the uh, the hole. I'll just leave it blank right now, but you can just go to Pro Shaders and I don't know stone or ground or concrete or just just pick anything that that fits the uh, the shape. The, the, the shade and colour of the, of the thing that you put in the hole in or you could just take some shots of the actual texture of the um, of the rock that you put in the hole in that would be <coughs> the best I didn't think about that at the time but it's fine to the third. ok so that's really humongous right now so let's go it's a lot easier to to use the um, like to organise the, the objects that you're using in Element, if you create a, um, a null, so you go create group null, create, and then you've got this null here that you can just alter, and basically Element will uh, follow it. Okay, let's see how the camera track's doing. 50%. So I'm just going to wait this out and then uh, I'll come back when it's done. So that looks like it's about right. If you want to just right click there and then click create null and camera. There's a null for this little bit there, and then there's a camera being created. So now if we turn our element back on, it should about stay as if it's in the scene somewhere. You see, it's, obviously it's, it's closer to the camera than the rock is, so it's um, sliding along it. But what you want to do is, Firstly, you want to take the group null, I'll just change that to whole null, just so it's a little bit more clear, and then you want to take the position, um, alt click on the position keyframe, uh, stopwatch, I mean, and then grab that pick whip, hold down alt, and then pick whip it to the position of the track null. There we go. It looks pretty good. And then obviously you need to scale it up. So you want to um, grab the whole null, scale it up a little bit to how big you want it to be in the rock. Um, that looks about, yeah, make it pretty big. That looks pretty good. Um, and now, what you can probably tell is is that it just it, it doesn't look right it's not moving perfectly with the rock and that's because the anchor point is in the middle of this um, of the object um, but the but the null that it's tracked to is on the edge of the rock so basically you want to go inside element and then pull back a little bit and we'll put show grid and look if you see the where the where it crosses is the anchor point which is right in the middle of it but what we need to do is we need to bring it to the edge, to the back edge. Uh, so what you want to do is you go to the anchor offset and you pull it back. Oh, do you know what? It's got to be minus one. There you go. And that's done. So now it's on the edge there, right in the middle. So now when we do that, it shifts the whole thing back a little bit. And it should stay as if this, this forward, most forward edge of the hole is stuck to the rock so you, as you can see the back of it looks like it's sliding now because it, that's what it should be doing but what we don't want is this bit so what I want to do is I want to open up this thing I want to copy the mask and I'm going to do layer new solid and make it black I'm going to call it shape matte. 
now what I want to do is I want to just paste the mask back onto it change it to a add mask instead and then make it a 3D <coughs> and do the exact same thing so alt position grab the pick whip and hold down alt, hold down alt again and pick whip it to the track null position so it should go there now that's a little bit too small so let's scale it up so it fits it's going to be a little bit off but that's okay if we just twist it this way that's just about right probably make it a little bit bigger, it's not going to be perfect again, but even probably feather it a little bit just to make it blend a little bit better, so give it 10 maybe and then you want to bring this above the element layer and you want to and you want to take the element layer set it track mat alpha mat shape mat so now Smaller than I thought. But now we've got this little look, it looks like it's indented into the thing. You can't really tell right now. Let me just get rid of some of that feather actually. So take it down to 10. Probably all the way down. Probably scale it down a little bit as well. Yeah, that looks better. I actually want to extrude the element more um, so it's not deep enough for my liking. I want to really be able to see it um, go far back. So I think to 30, see what that's like. Boy. Yeah, that's cool. Okay. So now you see it really goes far back. <clears throat> and then what we want to do is we want to duplicate the shape map command D bring that below element turn that back on and then scale it down a little bit so we don't get that there And now that looks a lot better. That looks like you can really sort of see what's happening. Let's uh, actually take the feathering down all the way because I don't actually like it at all. So, so now you can tell that there's a, a hole. It's really not a great shape, but and then what I want to do is you want to take an image of what is behind the thing. If you can't get behind it, any image will do as long as it fits in. So I just have this uh, image that I took that is completely on the other side. I'll bring it above the the, the uh, footage and scale it down a little bit like this. Um, pop it there. I'm gonna make it three D. And I'm gonna. So now I'm just gonna have to copy the uh, the position individually. Change the orientation. Oops. Just straight on. And scale it up a little bit. And push it back in 
in Z space. That way it's going to not move as if it's um, stuck to the end of the hole, as if it's further back, because it's, it, would, it would be further back. Let's bring it a little bit further back. Scale it up again, so it covers the whole thing. And then you want to set its track map to alpha map. And now it's not quite big enough, so it's going to go black a bit there. Yeah, let's scale that up a little bit more. Maybe it's a little bit further. Maybe it's a little bit too far away. Bring this bring it forward a little bit. I mean, we can scale up a lot because, well, what I did, I took a bunch of pictures and then added them all together um, to make a really big background. But for this, I'll just scale it up so it doesn't really matter. So I'll scale this up, up to 70. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add <coughs> a lens blur to it. Just makes it look like um, out of focus. And then, obviously the actual hole looks a little bit clear, so I add a fast blur to that. Two or three, three yeah, yeah, three look. So, and then, depending on what the sort of effect is you're doing, I also added a, um, a burn around the edge, around here. Um, I also, if you notice, the lens flare from the sun goes behind it or it did on mine because mine was a little bit higher um, so then what you'd also have to do is you'd have to just add in an, a, um, a lens flare above above the camera so it's up, up here somewhere so that this so that these bits follow this that's not that hard um, my, I didn't even do mine exactly um, yeah I'll add, I'll add a rock texture for you so you can set up resets Pro shaders, I think I did. Um, I can't remember which one I used actually. That's because I didn't use one of these, I just realised. Uh, but I'll stick that one on. It's a little bit shiny. Mm. You could use um, anything really. You want to change the that's a little bit shiny because it's marble. Um, there you go. That one might be better. Yeah, 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 there you go. That's a lot better. And then, so that's a, that's a little bit dark. So if you want, you can just add a curves adjustment or however you want to color correct it. A little bit brighter. I mean, obviously, again, it's not perfect, but this is basically how I did this effect. The burn around the edge makes it look a lot better. Um, also, then you could you could also add cr some cracks around it, um, or anything anything like that, really. Yeah. That's how it's done. Check out the video, uh, the original video in a link below, or just click the screen because I'm sure it'll take you to it. Um, subscribe to my uh, main channel and subscribe to this channel for tutorials. Um, if there's any other effects you want to see a tutorial for, um, I'm going to want to start doing them quite regularly so I can get better at them. At them. Um, so just yeah, leave a comment. Let me know what you want. What you want to see. Thanks.